Good morning and welcome to another episode of uh, uh, Van of uh, today in the news of Vanguard Life. And my name is Precious Chukudi, and I have with me my co-host Sherry Fatlawa. All right, so uh, Sherry Fat, how are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. Okay, so uh, without further much ado, we just run straight on the the major headlines for today, and we have our Vanguard. And the major headline on Vanguard is COVID-19. Governors ask NASS, that's the NAS, to drop infectious diseases bill. And the riders are say state government in front in forefront of war against COVID not consulted and express worry over increasing cases. Send your representative to public hearing, reps tells governors. Uh, Lagos records 56 new cases as confirmed cases rises to 5,162. Also, uh, stories above we have on page two, Monarch prints one other remanded for defiling 14-year-old girl. And on page 12, we have why Canada denied air peace landing rights, Unyema. And on page 15, we have Ohaneze, Southeast Monarch raised alarm over our marginalized influx. And uh, lastly, on the uh, Vanguard newspaper, we have article blast federal government over financial recklessness. And uh, from Vanguard, we move straight to the Punch newspaper. Yes, on the Punch this morning, we have nation nationwide lockdown. 50% pregnant women, nursing mothers, others desert hospitals. Outpatient visit drop from 4 to 2 million. As well as Lagos discharging 541 patients. Of course, after they have tested negative twice. And in the same vein, it's 5,000 people have died of COVID-19 in U.S. Home feeding, from school, home feeding for school children begins. Parents collect pupils rations. Six drown in Cross River while returning from, from funeral. Um, yes, or your commissioner dies, marking day along, others mourn. 24 Aquaibon girls rescued from Lagos traffickers. Buhari's daughter's seen. DSS ordered to pay traders 10 million. On punch, we still also have paying lecturers without biometric fraud lens, says ASU. Sell, sell presidential jets. Cancel 27 billion National Assembly Renovation Fund, Article tells federal government. Now we move to the nation. In our nation newspaper, we have a major headline. Federal government frowns at stage, reopens mosques and churches. And the riders, we have tax force to engage governors after Borno, uh, Gombe, Zamfara, Adamawa is locked down. Uh, more Lagosians favor return of lockdown. And on the stories above on the nation newspaper, we have governors kick against infectious disease bill as a NG, NGF six a stay of action. Also on page 28 of the nation, we have Ondo uncovers a 4.3 billion in secret account opened by uh, a Gago gov government. And uh, lastly, on the nation, we have all your commissioner dies of heart attack, fashionanti, and epitome of consistency, says uh, Tinubu. And away from the nation, move straight to Daily Trust. Yes, on Daily Trust this morning, we have, we don't know Chinese medics whereabouts, FG. Federal government is saying they don't know Chinese medics whereabouts. Let's, let's not forget that Chinese medics, 15 of them, 15 members came into Nigeria. Yes, that's, that generated a lot of backlash though. But then, federal government is saying they don't know their whereabouts. Also, use of face masks now mand mandatory, federal government says. Wari attends two meetings without face masks, yes. Well, let us know what you think about that. Not using face masks puts others at risk, expert says. We got Madagascar about cure free, SGF, yes. Boss Mustafa is saying we got Madagascar about cure free of charge. Let us know what you think about that. Um, also, controversy trails appointment of new judges on page 3 of Daily Trust. On page 7, we have COVID-19. Can we get female-only isolation center? Yes. Also on page 34, suspend consideration of infectious disease bill. 
Um, yes, we also have, um, okay, there is Ramadan timing, um, timing for Abuja, but you can look on Daily Trust for that. We don't know, okay, Naira to depreciate, to depreciate further, anal analyst says. Also, moving away from Daily Trust, we're moving to The Guardian. And on the Guardian newspaper, we have major headlines. COVID-19 may never go away, WHO warns. And uh, the story is beneath. We have governor seek suspension of infectious disease bill. And uh, Buhari meets uh, service chiefs vows, vows decisive action against insecurity. Also, PDP alleged uh, 13.5 billion Naira scam as modified school feeding uh, scheme begins. You can see more on that story on page uh, 5 of uh, the, the Guardian newspaper. And uh, lastly on the Guardian, we have Lagos begin a mobile campaign to halt COVID-19 community spread. That story also can be found on page 4. And uh, that's all we have for you on our newspaper uh front pages of the newspaper we're moving straight to the newspaper analysis segment remember that you can equally uh, like share and subscribe on all our social media platforms showing on your screen we're going to go on a very short break and when we come back we we'll launch into the newspaper analysis segment we'll be right back All right, welcome back. And if you're just joining us, it's of course today in the news on Vanguard Live. And we just finished with the front pages of the newspaper, and we're moving on to the newspaper analysis segment. Uh, I'll be doing this with uh, uh, Sharifat uh, Lawal. So my name is Precious Chukudi, and let's just move straight into uh, one of the uh, major headlines of Vanguard newspaper, and that's COVID-19. Governors asked uh, National Assembly to drop infectious diseases bill and uh, the governors of 36 states asked the Senate and the House of Representatives to immediately uh, step down the controversial uh, control of the infectious diseases bill uh, 2020 until an appropriate uh, consultative process um, is carried out and also uh, the bill among others uh, seek to ensure compulsory vaccination of citizens against infectious diseases uh, make possession of health care uh, card mandatory for international travelers leaving or arriving in Nigeria just like the yellow fever card what do you think about this uh, well I I think that the bill having in it alone that everybody must compulsorily be vaccinated is I don't know. I, I think that is going to meet a lot of brick walls. And that's the reason why the governors are saying that... Uh, it's going to meet a lot of... Not just from the governors of the 36 states alone, but even from citizens alike. I, I don't know why you should want to vaccinate me when I don't want to. I don't want to receive the vaccine. Why must you make it compulsory? Then there's going to be a penalty on if I don't want to. Um, you're taking away my rights. Okay. And I, I don't I don't know I don't know how to place that. I mean, we should be free to choose. 
Yeah, well, so we're moving on, and then uh, COVID-19 also, we, uh, asked, we didn't ask uh, Madagascar for cure. They gave us, federal government is saying, <laughs> and uh, the federal government said that it did not uh, ask Madagascar to supply them their harbor cure, and uh, that the country donated it out of the, you know, goodwill in their hearts to them. What do you think about this? Well, well, since... COVID-19 has made Africans generous. I mean, Madagascar is generous enough to give something without asking. I mean, that's, that's good. Let's hope that it's not only Nigeria that giving it to without asking anyways. All right. But so then, <laughs> still on still, the, well, let's hope that federal government also looks inward for a cure as long as much as they look out words for cure yeah they were they're also saying that uh, they're looking inward as well and uh, you know they're also going to look out because at this point you cannot uh, you know once you have anyone who says they have the cure you know they have to go through the proper checks of navdac and all the other bodies to ensure that you know it can be tried on you know some of the patients as well okay so do you have more stories for us Yes, there is article tackling federal government on reckless spending. Okay. Article is pointing out to the government that Nigeria can't afford luxuries amidst this austerity. Also, article is article also suggested that if the public is trying to help federal government streamline this thing by saying that maybe it's suggesting that they sell eight presidential jets. Wow. And these also grossly faulting the federal government for slashing 2020 budget by 0.6 percent only in his word i mean mere 0.6 percent mm. that would leave the budget from 10 to um, from 10 10 trillion 594 to 10 trillion 523 but um well let's 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 know what you think about it. Yes, yeah, so if you think right. that uh, the federal government should sell uh, its presidential jets, yes. right, uh, let us know what you think uh, in the comment section. Oh, you article is also saying that they should also slash, they should also slash from the National Assembly, like they should just take from everywhere, 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 so that we can afford this pandemic that we found ourselves in, unfortunately, which we didn't prepare for. Wow. Okay, so moving on to uh, other stories. Uh, we have Ohanese monarch raises alarm over the influx of Almajirais into Southeast. And, you know, the Ohanese Indigo and uh, traditional rulers has raised the alarm over the increasing numbers of uh, Northern youth uh, from, you know, from the part of the country uh, being dumped in the Southeast. And uh, they are calling on the governors uh, to take, um, you know, a stand on it, like... You know, at this stage, we really don't need, you know, um, people moving from place to place. We're trying to containerize the virus as much as we can in our area. So why should, you know, this be happening? Especially when uh, issues of, you know, the president ordering that uh, interstate uh, borders should be locked down. So what is happening? Does it mean that uh, interstate borders are not locked down? What do you think about the sheriff? Well, the... Well, um, I would just say we we just have to we just have to see what federal government wants to do about that basically because as it is now the pandemic is not something it is not something that we are all prepared for and all of a sudden they think Almanji is at yeah, risk and well, yeah, but the thing it is, can spread quickly. Yeah, them. but the fact is they are not supposed to be moving from one place to another. They're supposed well, to be when their own state is not taking them in basically they have to be somewhere um, they can't be somewhere at they have point. to be somewhere no, eventually at the end of the day everyone is trying to ensure that there is no multiple spread of the virus in their state so it's like you're moving from, you're moving from one place to another you're putting all the people at well choice. i i think what the federal government should stand up to this and try and find shelter for this almanjiri if they don't want them here, they don't want them there, they don't want them in the middle. I mean, just create a place for them. Create a place for them to call their home, even if it's going to be temporary, at least. They will be there so that there won't be this issue of influx of our manjiri here. We don't want our manjiri there. Our manjiri is infected. Our manjiri has COVID-19. I mean, that would come a long way to 
put an end to this thing and maybe find a lasting solution eventually. All right, so we'll move straight to this one. Uh, WHO is saying that like HIV, COVID-19 may never go away. And uh, that's uh, Mike, Mike Ryan, uh, that's uh, the executive director of the um, World Health Organization uh, Health Emergency Program said the virus may just become one of the viruses around the, the world that kills people annually and like HIV hasn't gone away but it's, they've found a way on how to manage it with the antiretroviral drugs you know so he's saying that um, we're not saying that we won't find a cure we're just yeah. saying that we should be more realistic about it that uh, there are chances that we'll find a cure maybe or we might not find a cure, but we should also have it at the back of our minds that we should be able to live with it just the way we are living with HIV right now. And then, you know, people who have the HIV virus uh, can basically have drugs that they take and, you know, still live like normal people. So that's what he's saying. Do you have anything to add? Well, let's let's hope this is not the new normal for us. I'm sure nobody planned for this kind of 2020. But yet, yeah, this is where we are and we just have to keep living. Let's hope this is not the new normal because in a world where um, COVID-19 has come to stay, you know what that will mean? I can't decide that. I've not seen you in a while. And let me just hug you. I'm, I'm a hugging person. I love to hug people a lot. So, But now, it's, I mean, it's taking everything in me to keep, your hands to together. keep my hands to myself. Plus, I also like to touch my face very much. Okay. I'm sure everybody does too. But then, if this is the new normal for us, is we are going to have to adjust to it. But <laughs> let's hope it's not the new normal. Let's hope it's wrong for the sake of the whole world. Okay. All right, so we're going to go on a very short break. When we come back, we'll move on to our spot stories. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. And if you're still just joining us, it's still today in the news. And uh, before we move on to sport, there's still some stories that we think that would be really interesting for you to also uh, take note of in the papers. Uh, Sharifa, do you have some of those stories? Yes, on the nation, the federal government frowns as states reopens the most. So, yesterday, um, Gombe, Zamfara, and Adamawa is locked down and they reopen mosques and churches. And federal government is frowning against it. I mean, in the midst of this whole pandemic, this is not to say whether they are right or wrong, but federal government is not liking the idea anyways. What do you think? And, you know, because of all this flouting of rules and all this, that's what's making people say that uh, we need to continue the lockdown because it seems like uh, Nigerians do not want to cooperate with, you know, the directives given by the government, you know, wear your face masks, wash your hands properly and, you know, ensure that, you know, you are being careful and all those kind of things, you know, all those things are what's causing. And now with the fact that some, you know, mocks and churches are now uh, opening, it's, it's really sad. It just shows that we're not taking our health seriously and um, people are taking other people's health um, on serious because if you're not protected you, you stand the risk of uh, you know infecting other people around you so it, it just shows the level of uh, how serious we are even to matters that concerns our health well speaking of the lockdown let's not forget the place of hunger in this lockdown but then anyways let us know what you think in the comment section okay all right, so moving on to sports stories, uh, we'll take this one and uh, Igalo tops Nigeria uh, players, players rich list, uh, what's 9.5 billion naira 
that's huge that's a very big one uh let's move to this daily ali survives knife attack loses valuable yeah he, the story was everywhere on social media and uh, you know he suffered a, a knife attack yes and um, that was on wednesday morning and uh, it was it was really you know gruesome for him because he had like this spot on his face and everything and people took out their time to you know uh to just commiserate them on uh, social media and apologize for what he was going through. So if you want to find more on our sports stories, you can check uh, on Vanguard Newspaper Sports as well as you can check on our website www.vanguardngr.com. So we move on to this very interesting one that we always like to take, the Mr. and Mrs. Mm. You're going to let me know what you think about it. So this is uh, Mrs. saying that, dear, you have added some flesh. That means I am taking care of you. And um, Mr. says, with whose money? <laughs> I mean, I make all the money and I'm giving it to you. Well, she can decide to not use the money to care for you. I mean, there's a lot of exactly. things you need to buy. Can you still buy makeup or sorts? Yeah, I, I mean, there are people who have Spoil money. Spoil yourself. Yeah, there are people who have money and they don't eat well. And there are people who do not have money, but they eat well. And <laughs> it's vice like versa. Really. Yes, it's vice versa. There are people who have money still and they eat well. There are people who don't have money and can't eat well because they don't have money. So, like he said now, that with whose money? Like, if I don't provide the money, you won't cook good meal for me. Hmm. And she also has a, she can decide not to cook and say, oh, yeah, I'm putting this money in. Of course, I'm putting yes. this money into looking very beautiful, wearing and the best maybe. of clothes and all of that. Plus, Weaves is not expensive these days to get quality one. But then, you know, like in times like this, is. I think that everybody is really concerned about their stomach infrastructure. Yes, so well, that's true because <laughs> it looks like it looks like the end of the world. Of course, we are hoping it's not the end of the world. All right, so um, remember that you can equally like, share, and subscribe on all our social media platforms showing across the screen. And uh, let us know what you think. Do you think that the uh, federal government should? Uh, sell some of their uh, jets, their presidential jets uh, in times like this or you think uh, the slash for the National Assembly is um, a good one to let us know in the comment section as we would like to read this. Uh, Tim will come your way next week, Monday. Uh, it's Remember to stay safe, stay hydrated and stay clean and uh, thank you for watching. I am Precious Chukudi and I have with me Sherry Fatlawal. Thanks and for watching. Yes, bye from us.